So Tom and I got to go on vacation. So on the way home, we were with my parents and we decided to stop in the Ozark Mountains. And we had found this scenic drive. This scenic drive turned into a scenic off-road trail, basically, into the depths of the Ozarks. And we had no cell phone service. And we were starting to get low on gas and the road had been and the train had been so rough that like every time we would all stop to kind of regroup, we'd be like, should we just turn around and go back? Because this doesn't seem like we're getting closer to civilization. It seems like we're going further away. But yeah, we just really didn't want to have to go back over it. It's that sinking feeling in your stomach where you're like, I just don't know that we're going the right way. And now we're starting to worry that we could run out of gas. I start praying, I'm like, Lord, can you please give us some kind of sign? Like in all seriousness, I was like, we need a sign, whether it's a person coming through that knows the area, if it's a sign, like an actual a literal sign, sign <laughs> like two, you know, two miles to civilization. I'm like, we will take anything at this point, right? And so we keep driving and we come up to a literal river and I'm like, oh my goodness, the road literally goes through the river. We're just sitting there trying to decide what to do. And then across the river, we see a truck pull up, this like white truck. And all of a sudden, he's- An angel steps out. <laughs> I know, there's like this glow <laughs> around it. And all of a sudden, he starts driving across the river. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And so he finally comes across and uh, turns out that he lives in the area. He's like, I've been crossing this for 60 years. And so he gave Tom very detailed directions yeah. about how we could also navigate across. It wasn't until afterwards, I was like, oh my goodness, Lord, I had been praying for you to give us a sign or a messenger, and I did not expect you to send something so clear and helpful. I, I mean, I really didn't. I thought, well, we'll figure it out. We'll make our way through. We'll, we'll you get know, cell phone service We'll run again. out of gas and yeah. then sit here for hours until someone comes by. But I was like, if we would have gotten to that spot uh, any later, like five minutes later, we would have missed him and not seen him. And who knows who else would have even crossed that day. And so the fact that we pulled up just minutes before he came across, it was so specific and I was just, I, I still look back and I'm like, wow, Lord, like, thank you so much that you so specifically answered that prayer. Well, and this is what I feel like happens with prayer is we have like such low expectation. Like, it just feels like we'll be like, oh, Lord, please. But I don't fully expect that it's going to be answered or what I do expect is I'm going to get like the bare minimum of my needs met. Yeah. Do you feel that way? Like, oh, absolutely. You're, you're like, okay, maybe he would rescue us after we ran out of gas and it's dark and the kids yeah. are crying, you know? Or I would believe he would answer that for Diana. <laughs> he would answer that for my pastor <laughs> or the other very righteous people that I know. But for me, I didn't have my quiet time that morning or yeah. we disqualify ourselves from receiving the answers to prayer, but we really can believe it for others. And I, there's a podcast called The Holy Post and so Sky Jethani, and um, I think he's with the guy who created VeggieTales. Oh, very I'm sorry, cool. I know no names. I should be more prepared. <laughs> but this was the part that caught my attention. He wrote this book called "What If Jesus Was Serious About Prayer," hmm. and the whole premise is looking at what Jesus actually modeled and what he said, and then our, basing our prayer lives on that, which is so much of my heart around prayer. Yeah. I was like, oh, he wrote the book that I would have written, but now I don't have to. <laughs> like, this is awesome. It's already in print. Right. <laughs> and what I love about it as well, because I wish it was only me, but I think it's many of us don't have the attention span that we used to. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yep. So it's short little chapters but then also little like illustrations and stuff. So like it's visual, it's short and sweet, but it's packed with biblical meaning. Mm. And so I, I don't want to always just tell you to buy all these things on Amazon, but this one I think is it's a worth treasure. It. Yeah. I think it's a great small group or Bible study or do it with your kids or your family or yourself or me. And what I love about this is he's, he's making the case that, you know, Growing up, if you grew up in church, or even if you didn't, a lot of our formation is based on read your Bible, mm -hmm. go to church, evangelize, 
those types of activities, but often very little is based on how to pray Mm -hmm. or modeling it or doing it together. And I've definitely experienced that. In fact, he he cites a poll here where pastors say like their number one priorities in the church. And it is, it's like evangelism and outreach and programming. And then only 3% said that their priority was prayer. Yeah. And so it makes the case though, that prayer is our root system. Like Mm. prayer is what gives us the provision and everything we need to do those things like evangelism and outreach and, and care for others. And so I just, oh my goodness, it's like, it has like biblical, like deep biblical (laughs) meaning in here. And so I just love the introduction because he's saying like, Hey, if you look at the one thing that the disciples very specifically asked Jesus, Mm -hmm. it wasn't, how do we heal the sick? It wasn't, I mean, they did have a problem casting out one demon, but, but the main thing that they asked him was, how do you pray? Yeah. Because they noticed that Jesus didn't pray like the rabbis. The rabbis used uh, formal Hebrew. It was usually scripture, which is not a bad thing, but it was very formal and rote. Mm. And so it was just, it had become so pious and religious yeah. and oftentimes then inaccessible to yeah. the average person. But when Jesus prayed, he prayed in Aramaic which was the common everyday language. And he spoke as if he was speaking to someone that he knew. Mm -hmm. And we've heard this, right? We've heard this, like we need to relate to God. Mm -hmm. He's our, uh, Jesus is our friend and God is our father. But again, I don't know how often that translates into our actual prayer life because there seems to be this underlying thought, like you were saying, I have to be good enough. Yeah. Like I have to do everything right. And then maybe just maybe at the end of the day, when we're out of gas, God will rescue me. Right. And so he digs into, you know, there's two very specific parables um, when Jesus is teaching how to pray. One is the parable of the unrelenting neighbor who's like knocking and knocking, yeah. like, get out of bed, I need some bread. And then the other is about a son asking his father for a fish. And in the book, he's making the case, like this isn't about us being unrelenting in our prayer. It's actually meant to inform us about the nature of our father. Hmm. You know, especially when you think about a son asking his father for a fish. You know, and I think about this with my kids. I was actually gonna ask you if this is normal. Cause Dawn, <laughs> you know, has a few more parenting years under her, bed, her belt. It's actually really hard for me to say no to my kids. Like if they want, okay, anything sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. So I'm like, okay, you want like, we just have like little dum-dums. That's like our only thing, these small yeah. suckers. And they'll have one and then Adley will be like, can I have one more? And I'm like, gosh, I get it. <laughs> like, I would want one more too. Those things are tiny. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but just like, or you're at the store and it's yeah. like, I would love to buy all that for right. you. I don't know. There's just, I feel like that innate thing in me. Do you know what? Me, I feel like it's easy I know our kids won't watch this. I feel like it's easy to say no to our older three. Yeah. But Gage, oh my goodness, yeah. he has me wrapped around his finger. And I never thought I'd be the one right. to spoil the youngest, but he is so sweet. And he is the one that I always feel bad saying no yeah. to. Mm-hmm. I feel like, and we understand, I think logically you understand, I can't give them everything. We need yeah. to have some structure and discipline. And if you eat that before bed, it's going to be bad. Yeah. But I feel like there's that inner thing in you that's yeah. like, I want to give my kids everything, everything yeah. you know, and that's who our father is in heaven. And when you think about that, like you don't want to give your kids just like the leftover junk. No. Like you mm-hmm. want to give them the best. Right. And so, you know, Jesus is just making a really important case here for who it is mm-hmm. we're relating to and his character. And I know what you're thinking. I've prayed. <laughs> I have not got those extravagant answers that you're talking about. Yeah. And I think the key, while the parable isn't emphasizing persistence for the sake of like, we got to knock down God's door in order to get what we want. Mm-hmm. The reason that we have to persist is because it continues to place our trust and our faith yep. in him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, again, I can't give my kids everything they want when they ask, you know, there's times and seasons and, but when we keep asking and when we keep seeking and we keep praying, we are establishing firmly in our hearts that he is the only one that ultimately can provide for our needs. And I would say, I mean, I think looking back on difficult times, I I mean, reading my Bible is great, but I think few things encouraged me or changed my heart more than prayer. That there was something about first, you know, saying, Lord, you are so good. You are so great and worshiping him. 
and then, you know, being able to be honest with what the needs and the wants are for that time. And um, it is amazing how it starts to give you more hope and more perseverance um, to stay the course. You know, and I, I wonder sometimes because like when I think back on answered prayer in my life, the, the, the thing that always stands out is the way I prayed very specifically for my husband mm-hmm. and the Lord exceeded my dreams yeah. and I married the man of my prayers and I have so many friends that are single and I know a lot of people are and that's the only thing I can point to is I prayed every day Mm -hmm. and I had it was specific it became like just like these five things that I prayed so specifically for and I see how difficult it can be like and if you're doing online dating and I and we're walking with so many people right now that are in that season and I'm like goodness this is so hard Mm -hmm. but then I was like but are you praying every day, yeah. you know? And, and, again. and sometimes the things that we've been hurt in or are so, we want so badly yeah. can be the hardest to pray for. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It, I mean, it brings up the reminder that this still hasn't been answered. And the reason to stay persistent in prayer, our brain needs to know that we're doing something. Mm. And so that's where we can get restless or anxious, like mm. what's happening, nothing is happening. Yeah. But when we go to prayer, and so I would recommend... Put whatever it is that you're contending for. It could be the salvation of lost loved ones. It could be you need a new job. It could be obviously our world needs our prayers right now. Put a list on your bathroom mirror. You know, put a list. For me, it was every time I put my key in the ignition in my car. Put that on your steering wheel. Wherever it is that you're going to see it until you develop this daily habit. But I promise you, if you pray every day like that, yeah. or every other day, I, whatever, I don't care. Like, <laughs> yeah. consistently, you are going to, hope is going to rise up, and yeah. faith is going to return, yeah. and we're going to see awesome things happen on the earth. And you're going to get across the river. <laughs> so father i thank you lord i thank you for jesus your example your beautiful loving example of how you would get away and how you would relate to our father in heaven and how you would put on display his goodness his provision his healing power and his love for his children so lord i pray right now that our faith would rise up that our discipline would increase and that we would be people of prayer filled with filled with faith and participating in seeing your kingdom made manifest here on the earth and so i bless each one of us now in jesus's name